Hey everybody, let's take a quick look at the latest version of Disney's Aladdin, directed by Guy Ritchie and starring Mina Masood, Naomi Scott, and Will Smith as the genie. Normally I would start off with a plot summary, but it's Disney's Aladdin. Do I really need to tell you the plot? I mean, they didn't make any real drastic changes from the original. It's still pretty much the same story. And like many of you, I'm sure, I grew up with this movie, and it is the source of many fond memories, especially of Robin Williams as the genie. And if you're hoping to get some nostalgic pleasure out of this live-action remake of an animated classic, I'm gonna disappoint you right now, because that's probably not gonna happen. Not that this movie is bad, mind you. It's fine. But that's it. It's just fine and I don't feel like it ever really justified its existence. There are some aspects of the film that do work very well. Jasmine gets a lot more to do this time around, and even gets her own song. And Naomi Scott has a pretty good set of pipes. She did well. And they did at least try to not make this simply a carbon copy of the original. While the main story is still the same, there are a few details here and there that were changed, and overall I like the changes they made. For example, Aladdin's, or I guess I should say Prince Ali's first meeting with the Sultan plays out very differently this time around and is hilariously awkward. And Jasmine is no longer the only female character in the story. She has a handmaiden slash BFF named Dahlia, played by the very funny Nassim Pedrad, and I really like this character. There are also some things that don't work very well. Considering this is a huge, big, loud, expensive blockbuster from freaking Disney, it often feels very small and very cheap. Especially when compared to the original animated film, there are times when the city of Agrabah just feels so small and cramped. The Sultan's Palace especially. And this movie's version of Jafar. Ooh, he was not doing it for me. The old version of Jafar was very dark and sinister, and his face just exuded evil. This version of Jafar is so goddamn boring. He spends so much of the movie just acting and talking like this. There's no emotion on his face or in his voice or anything. He's like a damn robot, I swear. And I think the best way to compare the old Jafar with the new is to look at the very end of the Cave of Wonder scene, where Aladdin is desperately trying to fight his way out with the magic lamp before the whole cave just collapses on him. And in the original, Jafar is right up there. He's like, quick, quick, throw me the lamp! Come on, man! We got only time! Let's go! And in this version, he's just standing there. Just standing there looking down like this... There's no sense of urgency at all. It's like, come on. Let's go, son. Give me the lamp. We don't have all day. Are you fucking kidding me? There are a couple of moments in the film where he does show some actual emotion, so I know the actor can do it, but for whatever reason, he either won't, or maybe it's more likely that the director just wouldn't let him. And speaking of the director... I really hope this is not indicative of a trend, but after seeing what Bill Condon did with Beauty and the Beast, and now seeing what Guy Ritchie did with Aladdin, Disney, if they are going to continue to make these live-action remakes as musicals, they really need to start hiring directors who actually know how to do musicals. Beauty and the Beast certainly showed us that Bill Condon should never make a musical again. and. With Aladdin, Guy Ritchie did not do much better. One moment that really stands out to me was during One Jump Ahead. And, of course, in the original, there's that moment where the fat chick comes out and goes, Still, I think he's rather tasty. That is in this version as well, but as she is singing that line, the camera is actually panning away from her, and I think she's completely out of the frame before she even finishes the line. The, what? what? This, this is not how you direct a musical. What are you doing, guy? Now, part of the problem here may be that they're taking something that was originally designed for animation, which allows for much more freedom in terms of shot composition and how characters, human and animal alike, can move, and turning it into live action, which is much more constrained, even with the aid of CGI. 
And when comparing this to the original animated film, it often feels very slow and clunky. And I'm not sure why a story that takes place in what appears to be a vaguely Middle Eastern setting features a Bollywood dance number at the end, but... Okay. That was certainly an interesting choice. As far as the singing, it... Could have been better. Scott was pretty good, but Masood and Smith, not so much. They weren't off-key or anything, but there just wasn't really any power in their voices. Almost to the point where, and I don't know, maybe this was just my theater, but it almost sounded like the orchestra was overpowering their voices. And speaking of Will Smith, putting aside the Uncanny Valley shit that's going on whenever he turns blue, I really wish he had spent more of this movie not trying to be Robin Williams and just letting his own natural charisma shine through, because when he does that, it really works. He's actually really good in this role. When he's just being himself, when he's trying to ape Robin's performance, as talented an actor he is, you can tell he's trying to be something he's not, and it just does not work. Also, regarding the very, very end of this movie, just as the credits start rolling, DJ Khaled? Why? Why, Disney? Why? Anyway, if you have children and you want to keep them occupied for a couple of hours, go ahead and take them to see this movie. They'll get a kick out of it. As far as kids' movies go, it's perfectly fine. But if you're an adult hoping to ride the nostalgia wave, you're better off just watching the original again. And that's all I have to say about Aladdin. Till next time, take care.